Hi, Dave Youngquist, and welcome to Last Cavalry TV. This is part one of at least a two-part series on painting World War II German splinter camouflage. Today we're going to cover the base steps. Let's get started. So, I'm going to be using uh, Fallschirmjäger 1944 1 scale from Andrea Miniatures, uh, part of the Eisenkruz series, Iron Cross. We're also going to be referencing a recent publication from Andrea called German Camouflages. But I'm going to deviate from their uh, their step-by-step -step a bit. Some, you know, a little more comfortable for me. And I'm also going to be using another fairly recent release from Andrea, a Splinter Camo set. <laughs> Perfect timing, right? These colors are really great, dry dead flat, and we'll start using this set in this episode. So this is an original World War II German Zeltbahn or <clears throat> tent quarter, um, but it's important to look at this pattern before we try to paint it in miniature. So there's certain things to understand about this geometric uh, design. First of all, the brown color can run independent on the background, meaning if you look, you'll see this uh, the green pattern or the green blotches always touches the brown anywhere through the pattern. But the brown itself doesn't necessarily have to. And also notice that the raindrops, which will be in the next video, have openings. It is not consistent throughout the entire pattern. So again, look at the shapes, study these shapes. There's reference in the Andrea book. Um, there's tons of reference on the internet. But notice the geometry of the shape and that the green always touches or is inside the brown. Now, the, uh, the splinter pattern, now this, the, uh, the Zeltbahn is a little heavier material, but this is a waterproof poplin. It's, it's like a very light canvas. And the uniform that we'll be painting is just a little bit lighter in material, but is still a cotton. So some of the techniques we've showed you in the past on how to paint wool won't apply. This is going to be a little more delicate in terms of techniques. And we begin this project by painting the base color. So I prime this figure using Krylon Camouflage. It's a dead flat black brown color. I always like to use that. And for the face I used Bright Touch, which is a very inexpensive uh, auto primer. Does a great job. So I'm mixing color number one and color number six, which is the shadow uh, color, together. And we're going to start with our medium shadows. Going to keep the paint real thin. And because we are not painting wool this time, I'm not stippling in the paint. We're actually brushing it on. Just loosely because we'll clean up. I mean, it's kind of the way I like to paint. Just get those tones in there and we can go back in and, you know, do our cleanup and work it a bit more. And then I use a brush that just has water on it to uh, remove the excess. So we'll just get the uh, color in there. You can see it's not it's not fussy. Just feather it out. Leave the color in the uh, in the recesses. You know the areas that uh, light would not hit. And we're going to be painting this figure as if the uh, sun was at twelve o'clock. Oh, so we'll just get that color in there. Again, um, best thing right now is just to define your areas. It helps as you, you know, you move along and you'll be able to see, you know, where the darkest shadows go, where are the highlights going to occur. And I always recommend when painting a camouflage pattern that you paint your base coat, then do your highlights and shadows on that base color then when you come up to the, uh, let's say, the first uh, 
uh, camouflage splotch uh, pattern, which in this case is going to be a brown, then we shadow and highlight that. We'll do the same for the green also. But I always think it's best to do all your work in stages, just as you were painting a, a complete figure without camouflage on it. It'd be really tough to go back and shadow and highlight your base once you have these other colors on. So just back and forth, back and forth, kind of making a mess. That's okay. Like I said, there's just a little bit of a water then. Just clean it up. A little darker colors. That's where the shovel's going to go, so that whole area would be in shadow. And darker color there between the legs. Okay, there. Like I said, what a mess, but there we go with our clean brush. Okay, now adding the Andrea highlight color. And now I'm going to use a flat brush. This is a nylon brush, an expensive one and just feather that highlight right out of there, just leaving a bit of a stain. Back with the color again, mixed with our base. It's really just a, a, a very light flesh color, which has always been my uh, recommended color to uh, create highlights with. You know, whether it's black or blue or red, I always use some type of a flesh color. So we just block that in. And again, all this... Uh, this work is pretty much going to get covered up once we, uh, you know, add our green and uh, brown blotches and then the, uh, the raindrops. But again, this is what's going to add the realism to the figure. So highlights in the back of the figure. But in the areas, you know, where the green and the brown won't um, cover, now you've got a, uh, a very realistic, you know, uh, highlight, highlighted and uh, shadowed uh, depiction of cloth. Now, mixing up the shadow color and again a bit of the base, but we're keeping this mix um, darker. We're going to go in and add our darker shadows. Again, you notice we're not stippling, we're just brushing it right in, keeping the mixture very, very thin, going over some of the areas which we have uh, uh, done previously. There again, you know, trying to concentrate on areas where light won't hit. Feather that out slightly. Back to the uh, shadow color. Now I know some people prefer, you know, to paint the darker shadows first and then work up. Some people like to go highlights and then dark. I always start in the middle and then work, uh, you know, dark and then light or light then dark. Just depends. So back to the highlights. Again, just a little bit lighter this time. Keeping the paint thin. And I'm just going to create some of the wrinkles in the, the cloth. Highlight the edge of the smock. Yeah, you can see it's starting to tighten up just a little bit. Again, I just back and forth, back and forth, um, refining the, uh, the initial mess that uh, we made in the first steps. Ed is painting in some of the seam lines on the clothing. Okay, so we just continue to refine a little bit. And you notice uh, some of this is just actually wet on wet blending, you know, because we've got our shadow color in there, which is still wet. 
And now we can just drop in a few more of the highlights, feather those out a bit. There, starting to get there. Now, you can see the palette that we used, just three colors. And there we are, we're ready for the camo pattern. Camo pattern will be the brown, the green, and then the splinter colors. And that's what we're going to be working on the next video. So just get started. I'm going to practice a little bit, <laughs> make sure I can do this on film properly for you. This is David Youngquist, Last Cavalry TV, and we'll see you real soon with part two of painting splinter camouflage patterns. <laughs>